Hi, boys and girls. We've been learning about different characters who stand up for themselves in our read-alouds this week. And um, today's book that I'm going to read aloud to you is one that I absolutely love. And it's called Amazing Grace by Mary Hoffman, and it's illustrated by Caroline Binch. Now, this story is about a little girl named Grace who loves to act things out. She loves to pretend to be characters from children's books and literature that um, are adventurous and fun to play. And every time that her grandmother reads her book or she reads a book, she loves to act it out. Um, and she seems to have a great imagination. Um, something happens uh, where somebody tries to tell Grace what she can't do. And uh, we're going to read to find out more about that. Here is Amazing Grace. Grace was a girl who loved stories. She didn't mind if they were read to her or told to her or made up in her own head. She didn't care if they were from books or movies or out of Nana's long memory. Grace loved stories. And after she had heard them, and sometimes while they were still going on, Grace would act them out. And she always gave herself the most exciting part. So if you notice, Grace is here with her Nana. That's something that some, uh, some a name that some people use for their grandmothers. And so it looks like her grandmother is telling her a story. They look very happy. Grace went into battle as Joan of Arc and wove a wicked web as Anansi the spider. She hid inside a wooden horse at the gates of Troy. She sailed the seven seas with a peg leg and a parrot. She was Aladdin rubbing his magic lamp until the genie appeared and Mowgli in the backyard jungle. Most of all, Grace loved to act out adventure stories and fairy tales. When there was no one else around, Grace played all the parts herself. She set out to seek her fortune with no companion but her trusty cat and found a city with streets paved in gold. So like I said, Grace has a great imagination. Sometimes she could get Ma and Nana to join in when they weren't too busy. Then she was Dr. Grace and their lives were in her hands. Let's go back a little bit. What, uh, what do we notice so far about Grace's family? Um, it seems like, well, she lives with her mom and maybe grandma lives with her. And it seems like, um, they have a very loving relationship and they play along with her. They read to her. Let's keep reading. One day, Grace's teacher said that they would do the play Peter Pan. Grace knew who she wanted to be. When she raised her hand, Raj said, you can't be Peter. That's a boy's name. But Grace kept her hand up. You can't be Peter Pan, whispered Natalie. He isn't black. But Grace kept her hand up. All right, said the teacher. Lots of you want to be Peter Pan, so we'll have to have auditions next week to choose parts. She gave them words to learn. Now, an audition is when you try out for a part in a play. And you do this by pretending to speak like the character and act like the character. Um, and so that way different people get to try out and then they choose the best one for the actual part. So the teacher said that she's going to have auditions next week. When Grace got home, she seemed sad. What's the matter? Asked Ma. Raj said, I couldn't be Peter Pan because I'm a girl. That just shows that Raj, what Raj knows, said Ma. A girl can be Peter Pan if she wants to. Grace cheered up. Then later, she remembered something else. Natalie says, I can't be Peter Pan because I'm black, she says. 
Ma looked angry, but before she could speak, Nana said, It seems Natalie is another one who don't know nothing. You can be anything you want, Grace, if you put your mind to it. Now, how do you think Grace felt by hearing her classmates say those things? How would you feel if somebody told you that you couldn't be something you really wanted to be because you were either a boy or a girl because of the color of your skin? I know I would feel frustrated and I would feel sad and I would probably feel angry and like it was not fair, right? I think that's how Grace is feeling as well. On Saturday, Nana took her, told Grace that they were going out. In the afternoon, they caught a bus and a train into town and Nana took Grace to a grand theater. The sign outside read, Rosalie Wilkins in Romeo and Juliet in sparkling lights. Are we going to the ballet, Nana? asked Grace. We are, honey, but first I want you to look at this picture. Grace looked up and saw a beautiful young ballerina in a tutu. Above the dancer, it said, stunning new Juliet. That one is little Rosalie from back home in Trinidad, said Nana. Her granny and me, we grew up together on the island. She's always asking me, do I want tickets to see her Rosalie dance? So this time I said yes. After the ballet, Grace played the part of Juliet dancing around her room in her imaginary tutu. I can be anything I want, she thought. Now, how do you think Grace is feeling now after watching that beautiful ballerina playing Juliet in the ballet? It looks like she's feeling much better. And I think Grace looks like she's feeling powerful, like she's taking her power back. On Monday, the class met for auditions to choose who was best for each part. When it was Grace's turn to be Peter, she knew exactly what to do and all the words to say. She had been Peter Pan all weekend. She took a deep breath and imagined herself flying. It was time to vote. And when it was time to vote, the class chose Raj to be Captain Hook and Natalie to be Wendy. But there was no doubt about who would be Peter Pan. Everyone voted for Grace. You were fantastic, whispered Natalie. The play was a big success and Grace was an amazing Peter Pan. After it was all over, she said, I feel as if I could fly all the way home. You probably could, said Ma. Yes, said Nana. If Grace put her mind to it, she can do anything she wants. So Grace did such a great job of feeling powerful herself and of feeling confident in herself and her ability to play Peter Pan, that she even convinced the kids who told her that she couldn't do it, that she should be Peter Pan. Because she did such a good job. Even Natalie, who said that she couldn't be it because of the color of her skin, said, oh, you have to be Peter Pan. Because she saw how good Grace was at being Peter Pan, and she saw how confident Grace was and what a great job she did. Um, and I'm sure that for Grace, that was a great moment to be able to prove somebody wrong who told her that she couldn't do something. And boys and girls, um, I want you to learn about Grace and the lesson in this story. And I also want you to think about what kind of a character she is um, in order to accomplish what she accomplished in this story. But I also want you guys to remember um, that nobody should ever, ever be able to tell you that you can or cannot do something um, besides your parents. They can tell you. But nobody should ever tell you that you can't do something because you're a boy or a girl and definitely never because of the color of your skin because you can do anything you want in this world and you can be powerful every single day of your life. I love you guys. If you have any questions,